Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to apologize for uh, be, not being able to hold a class for tonight because I have a, an equally important uh, schedule to attend to uh, this evening. Uh, but uh, I will see to it. Uh, I will still see to it that uh, you will not waste your time for tonight. Uh, that is why I am uh, recording this uh, video, this lecture, which I should give you uh, for tonight. But uh, as I said, because of an equally important engagement or schedule, uh, I will just uh, hold it by uh, YouTube. Uh, I encourage you to uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, and uh, you will not you will not regret uh, subscribing to it because uh, you will still learn a lot of things in my previous videos. Wag lang yung mga videos na kalokohan, may mga kalokohan din, okay? So ayo no. This video is really intended for educational purposes only and uh, it's uh, uh, compliance to my duty as a professor or teacher in Labor Law 1 or Labor Standards and Social Legislations. So this is for the second year students of MSU College of Law. So shout out to you mga estudiante po dyan. Okay? Uh, uh, for as we discussed last time, we are uh, we were discussing the concept of employer-employer relationship. No? So uh, because of uh, lack of material time, last meeting uh, we ended our discussion hanging, and I felt uh, obligated to uh, discuss to you once once again. Of course, you have already discussed the case of. You have read the cases that I assigned to you regarding this uh, topic, uh, and you have uh, I I hope you have understood uh, uh, the main points as regards employee employee relationship. So by reading those cases that I assigned to you. Uh, as uh, a summary, and to not let you net not let your thoughts hanging, uh, I will synthesize or summarize uh, the discussion. Uh, just a simple summary of the, the cases that uh, we were discussing last time. Okay, so as as we have learned. From the cases that we read, that when we speak of employee-employer relationship, it is uh, defined, or uh, it is considered as one of the most important thing, because in the case of Asia Steel Corporation versus uh, Workers Compensation Commission, the Supreme Court said that. The existence of employer-employer relationship is the jurisdictional foundation and without which an indemnity is unauthorized. So when we speak about jurisdictional foundation, it is, uh, the, it is uh, anchored on uh, the basic concept of jurisdiction. As we know, in, in, in several jurisprudence, uh, when we speak of jurisdiction, it is uh, defined as the power of the court to hear and decide certain controversy or a case. So without jurisdiction, a court has no power to uh, rule or decide a case before it. So that is why uh, in Asia Steel Corporation versus WCC, the Supreme Court emphasized the importance of the existence of employer-employee relationship because, as it says, it is the jurisdictional foundation. 
Okay? So that's uh, our learning in the case of Asia Steel Corporation versus WCC or uh, Workers' Compensation Commission. Okay? I hope you have uh, understood clearly that principle so that when you come, uh, when you are in your bar review and uh, worrisome, you can remember this. Remember the principle in the case of each steel corporation versus WCC. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Okay, when we speak or when we talk about employer employer relationship, there are tests that the Supreme Court employed in determining it. Okay, so in a catena of, catena of cases or a number of cases decided by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, gave or named this fourfold test in determining the existence or non existence of employer employer relationship. And it's, uh, and these are the following. First is the manner of selection and engagement of the putative employee. The second one is the mode of payment of wages. The third one is the presence or absence of power of dismissal. And the last but not the least, the presence or absence of a power of control. Okay? So those are the fourfold tests in determining the absence or the presence of employer-employer relationship. Okay? So, uh, but I have a unique way of uh, memorizing this one. Uh, sa akin lang ito, no? Ito yung, uh, it is how the way I recall, no? Parang, ano kasi tayo, no? If you cannot, if, if we, we, we will just memorize this by memorizing it in toto or word for word, there is a tendency that you forget one word and you forget everything, okay? Uh, my technique in uh, memorizing this four-fold test is that I simplify it by saying that it is the power exercised by the company and these powers are the following. The power to hire, the power to pay wages, and the power to dismiss, and the power of control. Okay, so that that in that way I can easily remember the fourfold test. Of course, uh, understandably I have a very poor uh, memories memor memorization skill. That is why I tend to memorize enumerations in that manner. I hope uh, it will be helpful to you. So just remember the word power, then the four words higher, payment or payment of wages, dismissal, and control. So that's it. That's the fourfold test. Okay? Uh, but uh, in many cases, the Supreme Court also said that the most important test of employee-employer relationship is the power to control the employee's conduct. It means to say that most controlling of all the powers of all the tests is the power to control test. In so many cases, the Supreme Court used this control test in determining the absence or presence of employer-employee relationship. OK? 
Okay, so that's that's uh, doctrinal. It is cited in cited by the court in so many cases. So it is very important that we should also learn or know about this test, no? the power of control test or the control test, as they uh, say, uh, in uh, determining the existence or the absence of employer-employer relationship using the control test, we have to distinguish, okay? We have to distinguish. If the rules or the guidelines or if the rules uh, merely serve as a guideline towards the achievement of the mutually desired result without dictating the means or methods to be employed in attaining it, the Supreme Court said that in that case, there can be no employer-employer relationship. Okay? Why? It's because what the company or the employer is concerned about is only the desired result. But as to the methods and means of uh, obtaining or attaining that desired result, desired result wala pa kaya alam si employer dyan. Discarte ng, discarte, na, discarte mo yan. Okay? Parang ganito lang yan. Um, isa kang artist, magaling na artist, okay? Magaling kang mag-draw. Sabi lang sa'yo nang nag-hire sa'yo, okay? I will hire, hire you to make a, a sculpture of myself. And ang gusto ko na na outcome is ganito. Ganito ako kagwapo, ganito ganun, ganun, ganito ang tindi ko, ganito ang, ang ang position ko, ang forma. Pero ikaw na bahala kung anong gagawin mo, anong method mo, anong anong style ng anong anong materials ang gagamitin mo. Ikaw na bahala lahat ng sa, sa lahat ng 'yon. So in that case, what I am concerned about in hiring that artist is the desired result only. But as to the means and methods of how that artist is going to do in making a, my in creating my sculpture, I don't care. He, he has the liberty to do what he ought to do using his talent and skills in arts. So in that way, there can be no employer-employer relationship. However, if the rules fix the methodology and bind or restrict the party hired to use such means, it means to be him, Pati ang means and methods of doing the job or doing the endeavor, then there exists an employer-employer relationship. It's because I am not only concerned of the desired results, but also the methods and means how to attain that desired result. So that's it. So in using control tests in determining the absence or the presence of employer-employer relationship, we have to make a distinction between two. Okay? If it's in the first, then there is no employer-employer relationship. If uh, in the second, and there is employee-employee relationship. And what is most, uh, there is a case, a very known case, that explains this control test and it adds another doctrine. And this doctrine is uh, 
the what the Supreme Court court called the independent contractor. Ang tawag daw dyan, according to the Supreme Court, is independent contractor. And it's in the case of uh, Jason Sa versus ABS-CBN. Uh, uh, it's a case, huh? case of Jason Sa versus ABS-CBN. Hindi ko nalagay yung, ano, yung title ng case. But it's Jason Sa versus ABS-CBN. And we know, I think all of you, if not, if not all, most of you know uh, the show Mel and Jay in ABS-CBN. That was long ago. No? So, I can still remember when I was young, no? I watch that show Mel and Jay okay so I will not I will not mention the year because you will you can simply calculate my age okay that's it uh, in that case uh, the Supreme Court introduced this uh, term independent contractor so uh, in uh, that case the, 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 the Supreme Court said that Applying the control test to the present case, we find that Sonsa is not an employee, but an independent contractor. The control test is the most important test our courts apply in distinguishing an employee from an independent contractor. Okay? Ito, ito kasi si Jay Sonsa is, uh, ikang, ano ito? Batikang broadcaster. Radio and TV, television broadcaster. No? So, uh, Tandem ito sila ni Mel Chanko na sa JMA na ngayon. And si Jay Sonsa, I think it's, uh, I don't know if still connected with uh, JMA. Okay? So parang inalisan ito sila ng ano, siya ng, ano, ng programa ng ABS-CBN. And ABS-CBN contracted uh, the services of Jay Sonsa for I think it's more than 300,000 a month. And the time 300,000 is much money. So, siguro ngayon, malaki, malaki laki na yan, million, million na yan, pag-uusapan natin na yan. So, ganyan. Ang, ang sabi niya yung ABS-CBN, ang, ang contention ng ABS-CBN dito is that, ah, I, I hired you, Jason, sa because of your skill and talent. No? Talent in broadcast. No? Ah, hindi naman siguro ordinary na magbibigay kami ng ganyang halaga sa isang is bilang sweldo sa isang empleyado kung hindi lang naman dahil talentado pa okay so yun and besides uh, ang 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 gusto lang namin mangyari is that uh, ma-check namin yung quality ng output ng ng output ninyo ng ng ano ninyo ng uh, ng palabas and ang mga content ay walang uh, anything no? There should not be anything contrary to the uh, interest of ABS-CBN. So, yun lang, yun lang ang ano namin, yun lang ang concern namin. However, as to the means and methods, wala kami pakialam. Kasi ikaw yung, ikaw yung mas may ano dyan, anong script ang gagamitin mo, anong katanungan ang itatanong mo sa mga, sa mga resource person mo sa, sa show, wala kami pakialam. Paano mo i-direct? Paano, paano ninyo, paano is ninyo i-set up? Wala kami pakialam. So, wala kami pakialam sa means and method. Okay? So, in that case, the Supreme Court ruled that Jason uh, is not an employee, but an independent contractor. Okay? Because uh, uh, the concern of the, the employer, the concern of abs event is only the desired result lang result na gusto kong mangyari and you have to deliver it by your own way okay so yun yung ano yun yung uh, yun yung uh, uh, explanation ng ABA, ng Supreme Court in ruling that uh, Jason says that an employee of EBS again rather an independent contractor okay so that's it no? so in also in many cases like uh this insurance agents, insurance agents. Uh, most of the time, most cases, in most cases, involving uh, 
controversy between insur insurance agents and uh, an insurance company. Uh, ang tinitingnan lang ng Supreme Court yan is that uh, ano ba ang ano ba ang control ng ano ba ang in what area lang kinokontrol ng insurance company ang trabaho ng ano, insurance agent? Concern lang ba siya sa result or may say siya as to the means and methods of how the agent do his job? Yun lang, no? So if the court finds that uh, the, the, the insurance company is only concerned about the desired result and uh, it is not concerned about how the agent does his job and the means and methods of uh, delivering the result, then there is no there is no indication of control and there is no employer employee relationship. Okay, so that's it. No? That's the idea of uh, determining the existence of employer employee relationship using the control test. And in most cases the Supreme Court used this test. But of course, uh, there are also cases wherein the court use uh, the circumstances, like uh, the employee was enrolled in the SSS, Field Health and Pag-Ibig. So that, that fact is indicative of the presence of employer-employer relationship. Okay, so that's it, no? And uh, there are also cases wherein uh, uh, the company would argue that, oh my goodness, I am not do, I am not, I am not the one paying the wages, no? the salaries of this employee, especially when if the if the if the uh, mode of payment of wages is this Pacquiao, Pacquiao system, Pacquiao basis of payment of wages. There was a case na. Sinasabi ng employer or ng petitioner na hindi ko yan sila empleyado, yung 22 workers na yan, hindi ko yan sila empleyado. It's because uh, hindi naman ako ang nagbibigay ng, ng sweldo sa kanila. It's their lead man. Okay? So, it means to say that their lead man is their employer. I am not the employer of those persons. Pero, based on the facts of the case, yung sweldo na ginagamit, para ibigay sa sa 22 workers na yon ay galing sa kumpanya. Wala namang capacity yung uh, tawag dito, yung lead man na magbigay ng sweldo, wala naman siyang pera, wala naman siyang negosyo, wala naman siyang opisi, opisina. So lahat yun ang gagaling sa 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 company. Binigay ng company sa kanya, siya lang ang distribute. Okay? So, uh, ito din ang dapat, ito din ang isa sa mga, ano, na isa, din, isa sa mga dapat nating uh, tandaan. That, like in that case, hindi ako sabi ng ano, sabi, hindi, wala, wala. Si, under yan siya, siya nang, sa lead man eh. Wala akong pakialam. Wala akong pakialam, hindi akong nagbabaya ng sweldo. Wala kasi wala. Pero sabi ng, sabi ng Supreme Court dito, uh, hindi mo pwede sabihin wala kang kontrol. Pagbabayad ng sweldo, paano sila nang tatrabaho, hindi, hindi, hindi ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi mo masasabi yan. Although, sabihin natin na, oh, hindi ka hands on doon sa kanila. But, the Supreme Court said that mere existence of right of control, then there is employer-employer relationship. It's not the actual exercise that ma of that right that matters. Okay? So, remember that uh, if the defense is that, ay, wala akong pakialam. Uh, wala, wala akong control. Hindi ako nag-exercise ng control. No? Over how the workers do their job. The means and methods, how they do, do their job. Eh, hindi yan pwede yung gawing depensa kasi ang sabi ng Supreme Court ay klaro. No? The mere existence of the trying to control the work of the workers is enough. 
actual exercise of such right will not matter. Okay? So that's what the court says in DK Bank versus uh, ILMUP. Okay? So that's our discussion regarding uh, uh, the power of control or the the, the, if the determination of the determination of the existence or non-existence of the employer-employer relationship. I hope uh, you guys uh, learned something out of our discussions last meeting and out of this summary that I am giving you tonight. Okay? So, once again, pasensya na po kung uh, hindi ako nakapag-bull ng class tonight because as I said, ay importante akong gagawin. Equally important. But of course, I will not waste your time and I will not uh, waste your money uh, in enrolling this subject. Okay? So, uh, ang next natin uh, i-discuss is about illegal recruitment. Okay, legal recruitment. This is a uh, very good topic to discuss because there are a lot of controversies regarding this one, uh, legal recruitment. So let us not uh, confuse ourselves uh, in uh, thinking that illegal recruitment is uh, uh, what is intended only for uh, dito, para sa mga uh, empleyado or mga overseas Filipino worker. Okay? Okay, let's start our discussion with uh, the definition of what is illegal recruitment. Okay? Of course, uh, from the word itself, no? recruitment is recruitment you promise a person of a job or an opportunity and you do it in an illegal way, no? in, not in accordance with law. So that's the raw idea of what's illegal recruitment. But uh, the labor code has its specific definition of illegal recruitment and it's found in Article 38 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. What does the law says about, what does the law say about illegal recruitment? In Article 38, it's uh, defined in this way, no? Uh, it's any recruitment activities. Okay? Discuss natin yan isa isa mamaya. What are those recruitment activities? Including the prohibited practices enumerated under Article 34 of the Labor Code. Undertaken by non-licensees or non-holder of authority. Okay? So, yun, no? Uh, recruitment activities. Yung sinasabi ko kanina na uh, I promise you uh, to get a job of this much and your your salary is this and your benefits are this. But you are not a licensee and you are not a holder of authority because the law requires that Recruitment agency or placement agency must have a license and must have the authority from the Secretary of Labor and Employment. Okay? So, itong tatandaan natin that especially recruitment agencies or placement agencies hiring overseas Filipino workers. Okay? So, marami, maraming nabibiktima dito. Maraming pinapangakuan ng magandang trabaho abroad by anyone. No? 
by any person. When I say person, it's both natural or juridical person. To get a job no, abroad or a high pay. Pero yung tao yon, yung person na yon, ay hindi pala lisensyado at wala pala ang authority to conduct recruitment activities. Okay, saan ba makukuha ang lisensya at saka yung authority? Ang lisensya ay pinukuha sa POAEA. What is POAEA? Hmm, sorry. POEA. Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. Okay? So, dapat lahat ng placement or recruitment agencies ay lisensyado sa POAEA before they can do any recruitment activities. Okay? So, take that. Take note of that. Okay? So, if uh, a person is recruited by a non-licensee or a non-holder of authority, so then there is the case of illegal recruitment. Okay? So, later on, we will also be learning about the types of illegal recruitment so as we progress. Okay? Why is there a need for a person to be a licensed recruitment agency? Why is there a need? There is a need for a person to be a recruitment agency, a, rec a licensed recruitment agency, so that alam ng, alam ng gobyerno kung sino-sino ang mga pinapadala abroad. That's basically because they are required to report to POAA their deployments. Okay? So, and para maiwasan yung tinatawag na human trafficking. Mostly, those victims of illegal recruitment are also victims of human trafficking. Okay? And human trafficking is punishable by the law. Same also with illegal recruitment. Okay? So, that's it. No? And para another, another reason why there is a need for a license. Para maprotektahan yung rights ng mga overseas Filipino workers. Because under the labor law, they are also considered workers. They are employees. Pero ang, kaka ang, ang kakaiba lang nga lang sa, sa sitwasyon na ito is that their employer is the recruitment agency. It's not the principal. Kasi ang structure dito ay triangle. Okay? There is the employer, which is the agency, recruitment agency. There is this employee, yung overseas Filipino worker. And there is this principal. Kung sino yung, kung saan i-deploy yung employee or yung overseas Filipino worker. Ang tawa doon ay principal. Okay? So, explain ko lang in... Uh, in summary, yung relationship between the three, okay? Ang relationship between the agency or the agency and the principal is governed by service contract or contract of service, okay? Contractual, uh, governed by law, of, law on uh, contracts, yung relationship ng principal at saka yung agency. And yung uh, relationship ng agency at saka yung employee or OFW is that of uh, contract of employment. So that is why uh, 
the employer-employee relationship attached with the agency and the overseas Filipino worker. Who is the, who is the employer of the overseas Filipino, Filipino worker? It's the agency. That is why it is necessary that the placement or recruitment agency is licensed and has authority to do such activity. Okay, so that's the idea. I hope you have learned something from that discussion. Okay, so let's go to the specific. What are those recruitment activities? It's in uh, the book of uh, cookies. Yung ito yung mga recruitment activities. Yung canvassing, enlisting, contracting, transporting, utilizing, hiring, procuring workers, referring, contract services, promising or advertising for employment abroad. Those are recruitment activities. And of course, the second one is those prohibited practices. Of course, you have to read that in Article 34 of the Labor Code. What are those uh, prohibited practices? There are a lot. There are a lot. So, that's it, no? Uh, and what is also a non-licensee or a non-holder of authority? Uh, it says that it is any person. As, as I said, when I speak of person, I mean natural, both natural or juridical person. Okay? And I hope you understand what is natural and juridical person. It's for you to know, but that's, that's, the, no, that's, the, that's the idea. Who has not been issued a valid license or authority to engage in recruitment and placement by the Secretary of Labor. Okay? So, basically, wala siyang lisensya, wala siyang authority from the Secretary of Labor. Saan niya makukuha yung lisensya at saka authority? Sa Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. Because uh, yung, sec yung power ng Secretary of Labor is uh, delegated to the head of the PUAA. So that's it, no? Or, even if you are a holder of a license or authority, but the same has been suspended, still, you are considered non-licensee or non-holder of authority. Because the effect of suspension of that license or authority is as if wala kang licensia at wala kang authority. So that's it. So that what constitutes non-licensee or non-holder of authority. I hope that's clear to you guys. Okay. So in many cases, uh, the court identified four types of illegal recruitment. Simply, uh, yung mga types na yun, napakasimple lang naman. Okay? Okay? Uh, pag sinabi nating four types, ito yung simple, simple, dalawang simple yan. No? Uh, simple, nag, simple illegal recruitment na ginagawa ng isang licensee at simple illegal recruitment na ginawa ng isang non-licensee. Okay? Para mas maintindihan natin ito. Simple, dalawang baga, dalawang ano yan, uh, committed by licensee and committed by non-licensee. Yeah. One and two yan siya. Simple or licensee, simple or non-licensee. Sino, sino ba yung, ano ba yung, Paano, paano magiging illegal recruitment kung committed by a licensee? Kasi yung nasa ano lang naman, yung, nan, yung, yung hindi naman siya pasok doon sa siguro sa, sa definition. Eh, pasok pa rin siya. Kasi ang sinasabi ng definition is, balikan natin, <coughs> any recruitment activities. Okay? Ay, pangalawa is prohibited practices. 
i ang nagawa ng ano ang nagawa ng isang license uh, recruitment agency are those prohibited practices enumerated under article 34a illegal recruitment pa rin yon so that's the explanation why simple licensee no it may be committed by a licensee or a holder of authority basta ang ginawa niya ay under doon sa prohibited practices that can still be considered illegal recruitment. And of course, pag sinabi nating gawain ng non-licensee, of course, wala siyang lisensya. At wala siyang authority. So, ayun. Pero, what is the common denominator between the two? The common denominator between the two is that uh, it is committed against one or two. Hanggang two lang, no? Simple licensee illegal recruitment or simple non-licensee illegal recruitment case man yan, it doesn't matter. Kasi both of them, dapat ang biktima ay isa or dalawa. Hanggang dalawa lang. Kasi, pag tatlo na yan, ibang usapan na yan. Okay? So, ito yung, ito yung, ano, ito yung uh, simple or licensee. One or two persons only. Sa so, non-licensee, okay, it's still considered committed against one or two. However, committed siya by any person without a license or an authority. So that's it, no? That's what and there lies the difference. Eh, meron pang pangatlo, yung syndicated. What is syndicated illegal recruitment? When we talk about syndicated illegal recruitment, it's the recruitment or illegal recruitment committed by a syndicate. Sindikato. So, pag sinabi natin sindikato, it's a group of three or more persons in conspiracy or confederation with one another. Okay? So that's the that's the idea of syndicated illegal recruitment. It's undertaken or carried out by three or more, a group of three or more persons in conspiracy and confederation with one another. Ilang, ilan ba dapat ang ano dito? Ilan ba dapat ang uh, tawag dito? Uh, biktima dito? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima. Walang, walang, ano, walang, walang distinction. Basta if it's committed by a group of three or more persons, it's syndicated. The other one is the large scale or qualified. Here, it's very important to determine how many persons or individuals uh, were victims? Because uh, in large scale, uh, it's either committed. It's this this crime is or felony is either committed by two, one or two persons, or three persons, four persons. And the victims is at least three or more, person, more, more persons, either individually or as a group. So that's it. No? So just, just remember the numbers. And I'm sure you will not get lost come your bar exam or preparation for the bar. Okay? So... Uh, I have taken so much of your time and I hope uh, you have learned something out of uh, my virtual discussion with you tonight in lieu of my of our class and uh, hope to see you next meeting and uh, read the assigned cases that I already assigned to you. Read those cases because we will have our graded recitation. 
next meeting. And of course, uh, for your attendance for tonight, you are, even though we, we will not hold a class, but still, you are required to attend the class. No? And this, is, this uh, video is the, the uh, nito? substitution. Election uh, ngayon, the term is substitution. It's the stub substitution of our supposed class tonight. Of course, I have my way of checking your attendance for tonight. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, this is the catch. No, this is this is to uh, test if you watch my lecture. Okay. Uh, you just have to put your comment in the comment section of this video. Uh, just. Uh, po put the word sir I am present okay remember to comment down below the word sir I am present and I will check your attendance based on your comments okay so I intended to place it or to say it in the last portion of this video just to check if you are uh, watching my video but of course uh, diba? Ma, diba maro? Diba? Kamu lang ba dahil maro? Pilpod ko eh so kung maro mo, mas maro ko nauna pag ko sa inyo duyan gamay so ano ano so for me to determine if you are attend you are present or not Kasi nga, may rule tayo that if you are absent, minus 5 points on your graded recitation uh, score. If you're present, then okay, walang minus point. Okay? Your, your comment is very crucial here because that determines your presence or absence. Okay? Wala tayong ano dito. Wala tayong uh, excuses dito. Of course, I will give the instruction doon sa cha, group chat natin. Just comment the words, Sir, I am present in the comment section. And that's it for tonight. See you next week and be prepared for our graded recitations. Bye-bye!